Alright, so I've al already written part of the solution because I keep botching this solution for some reason, which is really weird because it's really not that difficult of a problem. But anyway, so we've defined what it, or the book defined what it means for f to be independent of the second variable. And that means that if for all x, y1, and y2 and r, f of x, y1 equals f of x, y2. So changing the value of the second variable doesn't change anything. So it only depends on the first variable. It doesn't depend on the second variable. So we say that f is independent of the first variable if for all x, y1, and y2 and r, f of y1 x equals f of y2 y, because what you put in the first entry doesn't matter. It doesn't change f. So given such an f, define f tilde from r to r by f tilde x equals f of 0 comma x. I claim that the derivative of f, so this is going to be a linear function from r2 to r. So this is going to be a function where we plug in a and b. No. It's defined at a point in r2, and it will be a linear function from r2 to r. So you plug in x and y, and you get a real number which in this case will be x times f tilde prime of a. No, wait. The other thing when I wrote up this um, solution is I completely flipped the two, so I proved everything for functions which are independent of the second variable. So this should be... So independent of the first variable means only the second matters, so only the second is where we extract the second derivative. This holds because we have the following. We take the limit as h comma k goes to zero. This is just h and k are both real numbers. We take the norm of f of a plus h b plus k minus f of a b minus df of a, b at x, y, and we divide by the norm of h, k, and now what we do is this is going to be less than or equal to the limit as h and k go to zero of, so now the top, f of a plus h, b plus k, well, that's going to equal f of, well, f of a plus h comma b plus k. First variable doesn't matter, so it's equal to f of 0 comma b plus k, which is precisely f tilde of b plus k. So this becomes just f tilde of b plus k. Similarly, we get f tilde of b here. And then, well, we have the formula for df at a, b, just going to be x times Oh wait, no, we're plugging in h. No, this should be y. So this is going to be k times f tilde prime of b. Again, I had to flip it because I did it the wrong way when I wrote up the solution. And the reason I have this less than or equal to is because the norm of this vector h comma k, so that's going to be the square root of h squared plus k squared, and that's going to be greater than or equal to just the square root of k squared, which is precisely the absolute value of k. So since it's on the denominator, it becomes less than or equal to. So this is divided by the absolute value of k. And then this limit is precisely 0, because that's what it means to be the derivative of f tilde. It means the fact that f tilde it prime of b is the derivative of f tilde at b means precisely that this limit is zero. In fact, this limit would hold even without the absolute value signs, but it holds with the absolute value signs. And actually, I guess the only other thing here is that here we're taking a limit as h and k go to zero. We just ignore the h because that doesn't change anything. So this limit is equal to the limit as k goes to zero of this whole thing. 
Um, and so, since this is zero, the limit that we started with is zero. Because the, the limit that we started with is a limit of, so this is an absolute value over an absolute value, so it's going to be something positive. So whatever this limit is, it's going to be something which is greater than or equal to zero. And here we've proven that it's less than or equal to zero. Thus, it's precisely zero. Okay, so now we have a formula for the derivative of a function which is independent of the first variable. But then which functions are independent of both variables? Well, if it doesn't depend on the variable, it, does, it has to be constant. So, finally, if f is independent of both variables, both the first and the second variables, then f of x comma y, well we can change the f, we can change the x to zero because it's independent of the first variable and we can change the y to zero because it's dependent of the second variable for all x and y and r. So f is constant. And likewise, obviously any function which is constant is independent of both variables. Because if you change any of the ver if you change the value of any of the inputs, it doesn't matter because it's a constant function. So the functions which are independent of both variables are precisely functions which are um, constant. And that makes sense given the definition. And so, yeah, I don't know why I had so many issues filming this, but it's a pretty straightforward exercise. And it gives you a little bit of a flavor of what it is like working with um, derivatives because again we're not when, when we refer to the derivative of a, of a function from r m to r n it's a linear function from r n to r m we don't we're not we're no longer using the notion that we used in calculus like calc 1 and calc 2 where we think of the derivative as just a number it's no longer the derivative is a number now the derivative is a function, and that's really important. And so you just do this argument, and that's how you solve this exercise.